<laughs> oh, is that is that Winnie the Pooh? No, it's not. It's just Mr. Pouts. But I'm here talking to you about some more dilations and similarity. Um, so continuing lesson four, we're going to start lesson four, session two, or lesson four B, which in your notes book is on page 87 and 88. And here's our learning targets for today. We are continuing to work with uh, understanding what a dilation is and how it works. But three things that you can do to be successful. One, I want you to be able to locate the center of dilation of a figure. And we're going to work on that today. Two, uh, be able to create a dilated image. We're not going to actually do the creating of one today, but we are going to do number three, finding the scale factor between a figure and its dilated image. So let's get started right away. Um, in example one, we have two shapes, and I want you to look at the, these two shapes. Shapes T and S. It says figure S is dilated to form figure T. The scale factor is 1.5, and the center of dilation is point A. So you'll notice something that's different about this. The center of dil dilation is not in the middle of the shapes. But if the scale factor is 1.5, what does that mean? So let's break it down here. Um, part A, how, does, how, how are figures S and T the same? What do you notice is the same about them? Well, maybe you notice it's the same shape. That same four-sided shape. Um, but what's different in part B here is the size. Different size. So obviously shape T is bigger than shape S, and specifically by a scale factor of 1.5. That means it's one and a half times bigger. Now, these are called similar shapes. So figures that are the same shape are similar. Okay, so same shape, but then the size is different. Two figures are similar if one can map, uh, if you can map one figure onto the other by a sequence of one or more transformations. Figures S and T in problem one are similar because you can go, use a dilation to get from one to the other. So I just want to backtrack one thing with the the center of dilation. You know that the center of dilation is right is A, and from A to the these coordinates on shape S, like a, one of these vertices is that but then if you want to go one and a half times farther away from the center of dilation you'll get to the one that goes to um uh on shape t so you're multiplying the it's really one and a half times farther uh one and a half times away from point a compared to where the original so um it's just it's, it's actually on that same line you could take any coordinate if i wanted to go from here if I wanted to go straight to its cor uh, corresponding part, it'll be on that same line or ray. Same thing with these here. All right. So that shows a dilation. So when we're talking about similar figures, there's a symbol for that. Just like when we said congruent was this little squiggly with a, an equal sign, that's the congruent sign. Well, a similar sign... It's just a little squiggly. It doesn't have the equal sign. So that, it's kind of showing that it's the same same shape, just different sizes. It's not equal in side lengths. So is, uh, is figure T similar to figure S? Well, we said yes. And how do you know? Well, it's because it has the same shape and, and, different, uh, and different size based on one scale factor that's the same. So based on the symbol then the similarity symbol can we choose two figures here out of these four there's two of them that are similar so pick the two that are similar and write a similarity statement for that go hopefully you'll look at it and you're like okay i think a and d are the same shape just different size so then write the similarity statement you can say figure a is similar to figure D. Okay? That's how you use the similarity symbol, the symbol uh, for, for similar. Now, just thinking about how did you decide which two figures were similar? Did you notice that they were the same shape? Um, they had the same side lengths, maybe like the same points were in the same areas. Did you notice that the other two shapes were not like those two? Just, just make sure you're thinking about those as you go through problems like dilations. So let's go to number one on the model section. This is uh, on the next page. We're going to go through this number one and number two together. 
So figure D F G H I over on the right is dilated to form D prime, E prime, F prime, G prime, H prime, I prime. And hopefully you notice that it's getting smaller. So it's going from the blue to the red shape in this example. The scale factor is one third. So there's another way that you can tell it's getting smaller because it's going to be one third of the size if you're looking at side lengths. The center of dilation is X. So as I said before, if you were to go from X to E and E prime, it should go on the same, this should all be on the same line or ray if you were connecting all those. So that shows that it really is a dilation. And it is in fact, um, that is in fact the center of dilation. So part A here, it says, whoops, didn't mean to write that. It says size, side D prime, E prime. So I'm gonna circle that, that's right here. D prime, E prime. Corresponds to side D, E. So we talked about corresponding. It's the same place on two different shapes. So they match up. The quotient of their lengths can be written as a fraction. So when we're talking about quotients of lengths, the quotient of their lengths can be written as a fraction 4, 12. 4 over 12. Because if you count them, DE is 4, so that's the new one. And if you count, oh, sorry, D prime, E prime, DE is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's 12. So if you compare the two, and again, we said we usually do new over old, you get 4 over 12. And let's just think, 4 over 12, what does that reduce to? Well, what can you divide them both by? Um, you could try 2, but you could even go bigger. You could divide them both by 4. So I end up with 1 over 3. Okay, let's take a look at all the comparisons of the corresponding side lengths here and write those out and see what they are. So let's compare this first one, E prime, F prime. So that's 2 to EF, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 2 to 6. What is 2 to 6 re reduced to? Uh-huh, one third. Um, let's try F prime, G prime. So right over here, we've got 3 and then 9, it looks like. So I got three ninths. What is three ninths re re reduced to? Divide them both by three, and guess what you get? One third. How about GH, uh, G prime, H, H prime, and G, GH? Um, if I'm looking right here, so it's a one and a three. Well, guess what? That, that doesn't have to reduce. It's already one third. Uh, same thing with H I and H prime I prime. That's one to three if I'm counting those, and then D, that's one to three as well. So none of those reduce. But guess what? They're all the same as one third. And where do we see one third in this problem? You probably guessed it. It's the scale factor. So if you compare any of the side lengths, the corresponding side lengths, that should reduce to the same as the scale factor. And that's exactly one way you can find the scale factor. So um, to answer these questions, part B, what is the relationship between the quotients of corresponding side lengths? Well, they all reduce to what? One third. And that's the same as the scale factor. I'm going to reduce, uh, abbreviate scale factor as SF. Scale factor is the same. Part C, it says, how do the measures of the corresponding angles compare? Well, they all, they all, um, have the one-third ratio, meaning they're all one to three if you reduce it. So quotients of corresponding side lengths really are the same thing as the scale factor.
No, one last question. It says, what is the relationship between the corresponding side lengths and the corresponding angles in similar figures? So we just figured out corresponding side lengths. They have the same, they're proportional, or they have the same ratio as the scale factor. What about angles? If we go back, um, let's just say angle E right here and angle E prime. They're both right angles. F and F prime, both right angles. You can go back to um, any of these examples, like the very first example, and you could probably find that corresponding angles are always the same. So if we're comparing side lengths, we would say side lengths are proportional. They're not the same, but they all are related by that one-third ratio. And angle measures are actually the same. All right. And that's how it actually works in all things that are similar or all things that are dilation. And that's actually what we're going to go off of today. So I want you to use what you learned today to try to answer the, the two connected questions. Number three says describe two ways that you can tell that two figures are similar. So what? how could you look at and tell that two different things are similar? And then number four, I like to say label the, the center. Where's the center of dilation? and write the similarity statement that we talked about using that little similarity symbol. So I'm going to have you finish those up on your own. And that kind of covers, uh, especially um, that problem covers number three here, uh, or sorry, number one, locating the center of dilation, and also kind of talking about the scale factors or success criteria number three. So that's lesson 4B, um, understanding dilations and similarity. So that's all I got for you today. Have an awesome day. <laughs>